This rooftop tent is $1,600. This very similar rooftop tent is $4,000. Wait, what? If you're new here, welcome to Outdoor Auto. This video is part of our Budget Overland series where we explore more affordable alternatives to popular Overland items. In this video, we take this inexpensive rooftop tent on a 500 mile Overland trip. We test it in the rain, sleet, and even in the heat, and we try to get answers for all of your questions. Then we compare it side by side to this more expensive rooftop tent and show you the differences. Oh yeah, one more important thing. We've tested both tents customer support and we learned some very interesting things in the process. One spoiler I will tell you is this rooftop tent represents a change to the entire Overland industry. Buying gear is about to get more complicated. And if you stick around, I'll explain why that's good for all of us and why this tent is going to shake things up. All right, so this is the top of the box. This is how it showed up. These deep cuts here is where the damage actually made it into the actual tent. All right, so those holes on the cardboard correspond with this one and then this one's just a good dent okay so obviously we're not off to a great start the tent shows up it's damaged during shipment i think i've owned more than 10 rooftop tents and i've never had a tent delivered without damage ever this is my third rooftop tent None of them have been delivered with damage, so I've just been lucky. Do you live in a better zip code than me? <laughs> it might be easier for the trucks to get to my house than to get out to your ranch. Okay. But here's what happened. I had the shipper document the damage that the tent had, and then I documented it as well. I sent an email to the support line for the manufacturer. Uh, they got back to me in less than 24 hours. They told me the damage was significant enough that they could do an insurance claim on it and they would be able to send me another tent, a replacement tent. I asked them what they wanted me to do with this, and since they said the insurance claim pays for the replacement tent, this tent was mine as well. By the time that they shipped it, they, you know, they sent me the tracking information for that, and it showed up five days later. It appears that they warehouse these tents down in the LA area. I'm in Idaho, so they actually get here pretty quick, even though they're shipped freight. So almost immediately, I was taken care of and had a brand new tent, a second tent here, and I can show you that one over here. It's flawless. It looks amazing. Okay, so let's cover what comes with the tent really quick. Once you open it up, before you actually can pitch the side of this, inside you are going to find your aluminum crossbars for the top. Those are included. A very nice ladder, like the ones that you are used to nowadays, the telescoping ladders that are really comfortable to walk on. So. They actually, you know, it, it comes obviously with brackets for mounting the tent um, and all the hardware that you need to do that. It also comes with lock nuts for mounting the tent, but then it also has these. Um, these would be really easy to put on, but the problem is they don't hold as tight as lock nuts. So I wouldn't recommend using these unless you're putting a lock nut on and then putting one of these on to back it. You've got your plastic caps for the end of the aluminum rails and the mounting hardware for the rails in here. Uh, you'll notice in the video where we took it out and tested it, I did not um, put the rails on because I didn't need them actually. Um, and I always try to save weight every way I can. Um, you will also notice they have this sheet um, that has a link that you can go to online and there's a video setup of how to set up the whole entire tent for the first time. So if you go to the Amazon listing for this tent, and you look at the rate, the, the, the star rankings, you can tell these guys have kind of come a long way because the, the, if you go and look at any negative reviews that are like three stars, for example, there's a couple of three star reviews on there. The main thing that they said is it doesn't have a user manual that comes with it. Um, so they tried to fix that obviously because they are sending a user manual and they're sh sending uh, directions like online video directions now on how to set it up and install it. So, that's all there. Then you also have, they have a support email address now uh, that's gonna be included in these user manuals as well. So that was one other thing. Amazon won't let you put a support email on the listing because they are afraid that people, instead of buying the tent through Amazon, will buy direct and try to go around Amazon. So they have a support email on Amazon, but you can only see it if you actually buy the tent and you have that registered purchase um, in your cart. But now the user manual that ships uh, will also have the support email. Comes with a nice handle you can put on the top up here for, for grabbing when you're closing it. 
or for, you know, just for stepping up on stuff. Um, I didn't really see a need for this because they also include one of these. So this is secured to the top of the tent and I use the strap to pull the tent down. So I, I'm always for leaving stuff off the tent that is just extra weight if you don't need it. Um, it comes also with these extra bags that you can mount different places. Um, it's like a shoe bag and has a bunch of different pouches. Um, and it comes with the hooks already in the rails on the outside. If you're unfamiliar with wedge tents, this is the wedge with a pop out. This is the pop out right here. There's a bar underneath there that keeps that top extended out and gives you a lot more head space and allows this part of the tent to go up at a lot higher angle and give you more ceiling space instead of at a low angle, like pretty much the old school wedges. This is kind of the wedge of the future right now. I wouldn't be surprised if just about everybody starts carrying this. Right now, I know Roof Nest Falc the Falcon Pro is this style. Uh, these guys obviously have this. These, just like the wedges, the wedges all came in from China and everybody was just putting their name brands on them. So I'm not really sure who came up with them first, but CVT had one and Area BFE did and Roof Nest did. And they were all selling essentially the identical tent. And then to start to differentiate each other and try to provide more value as the price of everything started to drop, you saw this design show up where you've got the pop out now, which is pretty cool. They weigh in around 170 pounds. This one they have rated at 172 with no accessories like the ladder inside of it and no bars on it. It weighs 165. I actually weighed it on my car scale um, to, to verify that. The ladder and the accessories adds about 10 pounds. All these wedge tents have this cool T-channel. So you're gonna have one T-channel along the top of the tent, and then you actually have a double T-channel down there. And everything is mounted to those T-channels. But you can also use it to mount things like an awning or other different things, bathroom or whatever you wanna put on there. Everything that really supports any kind of weight or mass is, is basically aluminum on these tents. So they're, they're very sturdy tents. Um, the fabric is kind of cool in that they zip, it will zip completely out. So if somehow you did destroy just your fabric of your tent, you can always zip that whole entire piece out of the tent, um, get another one from the manufacturer, zip it in, and you basically have a new tent again. Um, I like that because I feel like these things are much less likely to end up in landfills and be able to be used for a long time. When you look inside, these tents are way bigger than people think. I have people that look at them on top of my car and they ask me all the time, like, can you guys even get inside of there? And it's like, well, I'm 6'4", my wife is 6'1". We both sleep in here and have no problem. Um, to give you an idea, let's put this on wide angle. My feet are all the way down at the bottom. My head is at the top. Um, so 6'4". I think 6'5 is probably your limit. Uh, you go any smaller than that or bigger than that, and you might actually run into some trouble. Obviously, you have pouches down here and a pouch down here. Um, you've got lots of pouches up here on the roof. Um, everybody, I think, has figured it out now, at least almost everybody, that fabric on your roof is a good idea because otherwise this is the coldest spot and all the condensation sticks down here and runs down and drips on your feet. So the only exposed metal inside of this is actually the little bars on the outside. Other than that, you've got cloth covering everything. Uh, you can see the mattress kind of has a quilting on top of it uh, that matches the ceiling. Um, all your seams inside are shiny, they're taped to help with the waterproofing. You've got your cool um, moon roof up here on top. So this goes through here, opens up. Uh, you've got the netting for the mosquitoes. Um, this actually rolls up. It has the hooks here and here. You know, what's gonna be funny is I think there'll probably be people that will complain about the ends of these because they'll go, oh, they're like really small and feel cheap maybe. But the thing that's funny about these is a lot of tents have big chunky ones that actually are really hard to fit through the thing that they give you to stick them in. So I was pretty happy with these because they're easy to use. This is that uh, aluminum bar that goes into a little hinge here and holds 
the rest of this tent up. And then these are the bars. You see the Velcro right here. There's the bar right there that goes over there. When you're stashing a tent, you just pop that off and you can re-secure it right here. Um, and like I said, this tent actually has one on each side. So I haven't put this one up, it's right here. Um, on Velcro is. There's your plastic thing on the end. Like I said, I actually kind of had to grab this with my hand and pull it apart a tiny bit the very first time. And then after that, it works fine. It's got this super easy thing to be able to adjust it, click it back in place, slide it up there, clip it on that bar, one on each side. You can kind of see, see how the tent doesn't droop right here at all and there's no slack. And if you only had one of these bars, say in the middle, you'd have slack right here, just like you have slack over here. And that will flap in a storm. So the fact that you've got a bar on each side to, to frame this whole thing out, I actually think is pretty cool. Uh, it comes with an LED up here with a cord, of course, so you've got to be able to use a charger and you can just run that down through the Velcro and weave it either in this pouch right here or stick it in one of these pouches above your head. Doors on all three sides. All of them have the mosquito mesh. And so you got a lot of ventilation. Mattress is, uh, we'll talk more about it in the actual test section after sleeping on it, but the mattress feels fine. It's got a zipper on it so you can unzip this and take this off and wash it, which is kind of sweet. And then you've got your condensation mat underneath. It allows that circulation of air. So if you do get some moisture caught in here, it can work its way out to the side and evaporate around these cracks so you don't end up with mold under there. That is a huge deal. I, it sounds like such a boring detail, but um, I always tell people before that became a standard thing, that was such a big deal. You would end up with mold under your mattress all the time. This zipper is the one that you can unzip to zip the whole tent out and put new fabric in if for some reason you ever had a stray ember burn a big hole through your tent or something like that you're gonna notice they have the elastic band that goes around the tent that you pop up and it helps you pull all the fabric in when you're trying to close the tent um, so those are actually pretty nice one cool innovation i think i noticed on theirs is theirs actually unclips so i've camped places for like a week this thing's just gonna get so stretched out and floppy it's not gonna work anymore so i kind of like that you can unclip theirs and take it off most of the other ones are just stuck so you just kind of like bend it down into that channel you know i just fold it down into this channel and leave it there for a week it's got good quality waterproof seals all the way around the whole thing this one's got this interesting textured paint on it it's gonna be pretty it's almost rubberized so it's like gonna be scratch resistant, I think, pretty good. I mean, quality wise, if you look at the corners of this and everything, like, you know, it just looks pretty dang good. Has the same type of opener as the new updated um, wedge tents. They used to just be one piece and it was really hard to clamp them down sometimes. So then somebody came up with this clever design of making it two parts to extend it and make it easier to clamp. The lock is just for a show of security, just like all the other ones. If you stick your finger behind it, you can unlock it with your finger. That's true of every brand out there. Um, other than once you, once you get into the completely custom tents like iCamper, where they actually have true keys. Build quality is pretty good. You can see got this bright orange. Um, the fabric is ripstop fabric and it all looks pretty darn good. First night in the tent in what is basically the coldest weather we can find in Idaho right now. In August. In August. It did pretty good. Colder weather is always the good test for condensation. Yeah, all the condensation mostly just collected up on the plastic up there and you can tell it vents out to the top because this doesn't have the vents on the side. Yeah, you can see a little, little condensation collected right here where it got cold. Yeah. But that's about it. You don't end up with any big puddle like down at your feet. You can see where my foot pushes against this. You can see a little condensation collection. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, 
I open up the windows for about 10 minutes. I can see she's dry inside. Definitely been in a lot wetter tents than this. Yeah, this is the only exposed metal right in the sides, and you can see condensation always collects on the exposed metal. A little bit of water there. I like it. That mattress is a lot more comfortable than I would have given it credit for. Yeah, no, I slept great. No problems. Yeah, and we're sleeping in a tiny summer weight sleeping bag with the, the entire bottom of it is literally just this material. So no extra padding whatsoever. Well, when we said we were gonna test the tent, I don't know if we thought this was gonna happen. But, uh, honestly, it doesn't flap around at all. It's not making any noise. Waterproofing seems to work great. So, we'll see how dry it is inside after uh, this lets up. Hey, well, just poured for, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. Now, we get to see how the tent held up. I mean, clearly the fabric waterproofing is fine. You know, everything's beating up and draining exactly like it's supposed to. Let's go inside. Climbing a ladder while running a phone is hazardous, by the way. Yeah, check it out. Totally dry. Literally nothing. So, that worked. So we've got the top one zipped, and then the rain fly was on. So no water, even though it got really windy, no water blew up under the rain fly and dripped in at all. And it is 100% pretty dry in here, it looks like. When I saw this, the first thing when I popped it open, and I kind of just at face value saw how good it was, that was the first thing I thought. I thought, this is gonna put pressure on the market, and that's not a bad thing for us, the consumers. I agree. And this is Will, and he's from the channel Venture to Rome. He's one of my Jeep friends. I'm his, to I'm his token Jeep friend. Token Jeep friend, yes, there we go. He was nice enough to bring his roof nest over so we can have a true, basic side-to-side -side, you know, comparison of the two tents. What to talk about today, obviously, is this one, and then we have the roof nest Falcon Pro right here. So I'm curious, well, when you walked in here and set this tent up, you actually didn't even know this tent was hiding behind my truck. So when you walked around the edge and saw it, what was your first impression? My first impression of seeing the other tent is it looks like a roof nest tent. Like I immediately thought, oh, this is a roof nest. It's almost exactly the same color. It's the same basic design. There are differences, but I had to look closer for them. At first glance, it looks like a roof nest. And then you're, this tent is brand new. You just got this from them a couple weeks ago. What was your overall experience with getting this tent from Roof Nest? Uh, so I will say when the tent arrived, um, it was great. It was in good shape, it was not damaged. Uh, first opening the tent, I could really feel like the quality of the materials, like just the fabrics. And I've had some tents, I've seen lots of tents. The fabric is really good. It seems like there's good quality control and good design involved in making this. That was my, my very first impression. All right, so let me take you through some of the things on this roof nest up that might be a little bit different from the other tent. So first, um, the canvas, although I don't think the canvas, this ripstop canvas is much different, it is coated on the inside with this uh, blackout stuff, which is, it's really nice. It's hard to describe to you what it, what it feels like. It's almost like a PVC coating on the inside. When you zip it up, it is black. And it may or may not add a little bit more insulation to the inside. Uh, these buckles right here that hold on the rain fly are quick release, which is really nice. Just got this little hook. So I think that's just well thought out design and you can just tighten it down. Um, the inside has some pretty clever pockets in it. So it has pockets where your where your pillow goes here at the at the back of the rig, where you can put your cell phone, your wallet, or whatever it is you have with you. Um, and it gets it kind of up off the mattress. The mattress itself is a memory foam mattress. Now I don't know 
if memory foam is better than high density foam. I do know that some companies call crappy foam high density foam. So uh, I will say that this mattress is a good mattress as far as rooftop tent mattresses go. But if, if, if you want a good night's sleep on a really comfortable mattress, you're never gonna find it from the factory in a rooftop tent. You gotta do some kind of aftermarket kind of. Yeah, I feel like I, I was saying with the go fast, if you give a tent a good rating, a good mattress rating for a rooftop tent is a six out of 10. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a great mattress. It's a six out of ten. It's like That's... how many times does your arm fall asleep? Uh, the, the inside of a hard shell is has a really nice insulation layer on it. It's a foam plus a fabric over the top of it, so it does give you some more insulation. It also just has a nice kind of comfy feel to it. On top of that, Roofnest is using a stamped aluminum uh, top that allows a little bit more space in here to close things in. So I have got two um, heavy sleeping bags and two full-size pillows to close in here easily. I bet I could get four pillows if I did it right. Um, so to me, that's a huge deal. In fact, that's a deal breaker for me. I have to be able to leave bedding in these rooftop tents because I have a Jeep and there's like no room to put that stuff anywhere else. Yeah, no room. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, a lot of it is pretty dang close to this other tent, which I'm interested to go kind of take a closer look at. You know, another thing I'll tell you is that mine has a frame that is on hinges that easily just kind of, you just kind of fold it up and then it's got one crossbar that secures it. And so setup time is really, really fast and really, really easy. Um, so the frame in here is different because I think the setup is easier. Yeah, it's tapered. So obviously you lose a tiny bit of space, but you gain some quickness and ease in setup. Probably a good 20, 30 seconds of savings there, I guess. I will say the biggest value proposition to this tent is the same as the biggest value proposition to that tent, which is it is a wedge or clamshell style tent that gives you a ton more headroom. Yeah. So, uh, being in this tent versus a regular wedge tent or clamshell tent is way different. And the setup time maybe is an extra 10 seconds or 15 seconds. You were saying that you and your wife think you could actually sleep with your head on the other side because yeah. it goes up so steep yeah. that you could actually fit there. Exactly. That angle yeah. is now like uh, not so severe. I, we, we were practicing kind of sleeping in there, which if you think about it is a big deal because I don't know about you people out there watching this video, but there's somebody in my tent every night who needs to get up and go to the bathroom. Yeah. So if you're sleeping with your head down here and the ladder's on one side, somebody's got to climb over the other person to get out. If you're sleeping yeah, your face. with your head's down there, it's a lot easier to get out one side and to climb over somebody or you have the ladder off the back at night or, or something like that. Okay, so really quick hits. Some of the other things we noticed that are different with this tent. Obviously you have the stamped top that gives you that little bit more room. So that's definitely a little different look than a lot of the other ones have. I would imagine that's where a lot of the extra cost comes from is having that stamped top. Um, weirdly finish wise, and I'll call out mistakes on the other one as well. This one has these extra rivet holes. Like there's a rivet hole here that has no rivet in it. And then there's another one on the back on this side. And then the other side has none of those. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. If somebody drilled something wrong or there's just missing rivets, but there's some random holes on the bottom that don't make sense. This one does have the air vents up top for condensation being able to get out. It's a similar style to a lot of the tents you've seen in the past. Okay, so after looking through both tents, what do you think? I gotta tell you, I think that there's a real case for buying two of these for the price of one of these. Or, you know, there are things that are nicer on the roof nest, for sure. Um, some of those things you might be able to just swap in to a, a, a like a budget style tent like that. Right. One. Like you could get a better mattress. Yep. You know, different things like that that you might just be able to pay for and still wind up paying a lot less. That said, I have that tent on top of my G392. Right. And on top of a very nice roof rack. Yep. And like the aesthetic of the roof nest is really nice. The yep. materials are really nice. I feel like it's a nice tent. So I don't feel remorse about making yeah. a buying decision. I feel like, I mean, I feel like in all reality, the, the two are marketing to completely different 
groups of people. Yeah. So it's fine and it makes sense. It has an overall more finished feel. Even like we were talking about down on the bottom where you can't even say that it would affect anything at all. Like even just where all the zippers come together, it's more, it's neater and it's more finished. Yep. So there's a more finished feel to the whole entire thing. But when you look at it, on my channel, I have a lot of first time overlanders and a lot of families that want to get into overlanding and they're on a budget. And when I look at the budget factor, what you said, where it's like two for the price of one, straight out of the box, comparing materials, comparing finishes, comparing everything. I mean, if you're a, if you're a dad and you either need to work overtime to buy a $4,000 tent or, or buy a $2,000 tent, and take some weekends off with your yeah, kids. Exactly. I think that's the tent for that group of people, for sure. My first tent was a Smittybilt Overlander XL soft shell tent, and I bought it because the value of sleeping in a rooftop tent yep. was, at that point, 800 bucks. That's yep. how much it cost for that tent. But that value was the thing that I was paying for. I wasn't paying for finishes, I wasn't paying for any of that stuff. And I spent 100 nights in that tent with my family. Yeah. We used the crap out, and I sold it and made My, my first tent was a Smitty Boat Overland tent too. Yeah. It was a small one though. So if I was just getting into it, yeah. you know, I remember when I just got into it, that's the buying that's decision crazy. that I made. And now that I spend so much time in my yeah. tents, there's things that have become a little bit more important to me. Yeah, there is so many tents that I love. I actually just did a review on the GoFast, and there are so many camper shells that weigh about 75 to 100 pounds more than this. Mm -hmm. They are luxurious. It's like staying in the four seasons compared to staying in this. But I won't do it because either A, it takes too long to set them up, or B, they just weigh too much. Now, these two tents, though, are roughly the same. Roughly the same. I would say that the, the budget tent probably takes an extra 10 or 15 seconds just yep. because of the, the, the pop out. Yeah, the, the way they would made it wider, you can't leave the one bar like in fully. Yeah. So yeah, it's got a tiny bit more setup time, but other than that, but it's, it's identical. Yeah. If you're starting out with a rooftop tent for the first time ever, you should be getting a wedge. Absolutely. They're awesome. Yeah. They're so fast. Yeah. Such a great design. Yeah. Cool. Uh, it's a really interesting comparison. Uh, you know, really, really interesting. I think, I, again, if it were me, first time starting out, thinking back to my Smitty Build days, it would be tough to say no to that yeah. versus a roof, a roof nest. I was actually surprised how similar they actually are. Yeah. But and then, I, but I was also surprised when you really look closely how many differences in tiny little details there actually are too. Yeah. So they're definitely different tents. But as far as functionality design, it's pretty similar. Is. I mean, you know, if you're Roof Nest and you see these competitors and it's yeah. entering the market, it's time to innovate again. And I, I'm yeah. really excited to see what happens next in the rooftop tent space, see the, the new innovations that are going to come out. And that all happens because of competition like this. Yeah. So it's a win for everybody. I agree with that, actually. I, there's a lot of people that would never buy that where they would just, they would brand it like they would say it's a Chinese knockoff or something like that. But we've known for a long time the wedge tents have almost all been made in Chinese factories and different companies like CVT and Roofnest and all these guys have been putting their names on them for a long time. Yeah. So I don't really see it the same way that other people do that way. But this puts pressure on the market. Yep. So you're going to see guys like Roofnest are going to push the button on coming up with more custom designs and features to differentiate themselves. Yep. And anybody that doesn't is going to fail, and that is good for the consumers. It doesn't feel good. It's even good for the economy and jobs. It doesn't sound like it is in the short term because somebody dies, but somebody else pops up. Hey, so we were talking about it right now. Uh, what were tent intrepid tents? You were talking about tents. They they've got a new. They've got a new take on a wedge tent. It's different than this one. We haven't used it yet, but we looked at it and we went, well, that's innovative. I wonder how good it is. We don't know. Yeah. We'll let you guys know if we ever try them out. Yeah. It's but, just like uh, the Bronco pushed the Jeep yep. and the Gladiator, the Jeep Gladiator pushed the uh, Toyota Tacoma. Yep. I mean, we all win in the end. Yeah, we're winning because it's forcing innovation. So yeah, this is pretty good tent. Yep. Cool, well thanks for bringing, driving all the way over and bringing your tent. It would have been really hard to do this comparison without being able to have them side by side.